I'll be showing nine new features in Microsoft Teams assignments. This includes a new video recording option for teachers and students, a whiteboard assignment type, apps and assignments, reading progress updates, and a whole lot more. So let's get started. The first new feature is video recording in assignments. This has been a top request. I'm here in my class and I will go click on assignments here. And down at the bottom, I'll click create and then choose assignment. We'll fill this out really quick. Now I'll go click new. And there's this new option, video recording. So as a teacher, I'm going to give some video instructions about this assignment. You can see I've got audio and video controls right here. So if I want to drop this down and change cameras, change my audio, a nice little video setup, now I'm going to record my video message. So I'll click the record button here, get a countdown. Hey class, I would like you to write what is your favorite state and then you can attach a video description explaining why you like that state so much. And then I click pause. When I'm done, I can click review. And you get a nice little way you can trim things out. So maybe right here, I'm gonna trim out the last part. I click play. Hey class, I would like, I could record again if I didn't like it. But in this case, I think I like what I have. I've trimmed out that last part and now I click publish. Then I give a name for my video, Mr. Tholfson's instructions and click upload. Then click done. So you can see it's added this video about the instructions about this favorite state assignment. I go to the three dot menu. I can open it in Teams and I can look at it again. But in this case, I'm ready to make my assignment and I'll click assign. Now we'll switch to the student side and show how they can add recordings to their assignments. I'm signed in as the student and we'll go to assignments. And here's my new favorite state assignment for my teacher. Let's click this. Here are the instructions. So as a student, I can say, oh, okay, video instructions. And here's that video that I just recorded. Hey class, we'll close this. Now what's nice is in addition to be able to attach work like you've always done for assignments, as a student, I can click new and there's also this video recording option. So I can choose this. Hey, and there it is again. So the same recording technique, I can click record, get the countdown, make a quick recording. And when I'm done, I can do the same thing. I can review it and we'll just hit publish. I also name this and hit upload. So I can do multiple things on here. So I can add a Word document in addition to my student video description. So I'll add a document. Now I've attached my document and I'll turn in. Now I'm signed in back as the teacher and I'm gonna go open up this assignment here, your favorite state. And we'll go down and open up Alex Wilbur. I just turned in as Alex the student. Make a quick recording. So there's my video. I could also click on the document to bring that up and then I can just give feedback like I normally would and return. The second new feature is another one that's been top requested and that is the ability to add a whiteboard as a new file type for assignments. So I'm gonna go click create here and choose assignment. And we'll give this assignment a title and instructions. Please draw your favorite planet. And I'm gonna go to new here and there's a new option for whiteboard. So I can choose a whiteboard canvas. Click here, we'll give it a name, click done. Now go to the three dot menu and say students edit their own copy. What this will do is make sure every student gets a whiteboard for themselves to draw on or do whatever they're gonna do with it and then turn that in. So we'll click assign. Let's switch over to the student view. I'm signed in as the student and here's that new solar system assignment. We'll click view assignment. And there's my whiteboard. Okay, so it says, please draw your favorite planet. I will open up my whiteboard. And here's the new whiteboard, all the new user interface. I've got a much deeper dive demo into the new whiteboard. If you go to the upper right, there's a link for it. But right here, I'm just gonna do a really quick drawing of my favorite planet and beware, I'm an amazing artist. I'm gonna choose Galaxy Ink. That feels appropriate. We'll make it a little bit bigger. So I'll draw Saturn. I'm, I'm a pretty great drawer in case you didn't know. We'll make the rings of Saturn and notice how the whiteboard corrects my circle. So I'm gonna draw the rings around Saturn. Oh, that's, that looks so realistic to me. I think this is pretty awesome. So there are the rings of Saturn. I think this is a great project. And so I'll just give it a little title. Saturn is the best. And I think, I think that's pretty good. Let's just turn this in. So I'll hit close and now we'll do turn in. Now I'll switch back to the teacher and review that student work. So we'll go to solar system now as the teacher. And Alex, he's always on top of things. He's already turned his in. Let's go in and look. Check it out. There's my assignment. Saturn is the best. There's my feedback for Alex. You are an amazing artist. And we'll turn that in. The third new feature are apps available in assignments. And we have all sorts of top ed tech apps that you can now add as an assignment. Let's click create at the bottom and choose assignment. We'll give it a title. So this is gonna use Buncee, one of our top ed tech partners, and this is gonna be a sustainability essay. And instead of normally adding something like a Word document, a PowerPoint, 
There's a new apps choice here. I'll click apps. Here is the new apps dialog. And you can see we're just getting started with some apps and you're gonna see a bunch more rolling out into this dialog in the coming weeks and months. But you can already see big apps like Flipgrid, Bunsy, Wakelet, Nearpod, and a whole bunch of others will be coming in addition to what you see here. I'll be choosing Buncee for my class, so I'll click Buncee. Now I already have a Buncee that I've created, so I'll switch and get that URL. Here's Buncee in my sustainability project. I'm gonna copy this URL and I'll go back into Teams. Now I'll just paste that URL. It found my Buncee, all right there, click Save. Now it's attached this Buncee right into Teams and the icon's there, it's all ready to go and we'll click Assign. Now we'll switch over to the student. Here's that new Buncee assignment I got as a student. So I click here and it opens up the Buncee so I can go through, I can read everything on my Buncee. Hey, it even has immersive reader integration, which is pretty great. So I've read the Buncee, now I close it, return to the assignment, and then I have to write a short essay. So then I could just click new and click Word document, write my essay, and then when I'm done, I just turn that in. So a ton of opportunities to have more engaging apps right in your classroom from Teams assignments. The fourth new feature are big improvements to how the Office web apps works for Teams assignments, both for students and teachers. I'm signed in as the student and I've got a solar system PowerPoint deck and I'm gonna show some of the improvements on the student side for how the web apps work and I'll show it on the teacher side. So I'll open my solar system deck. The first thing is performance has been sped up quite a bit and we're using this new Office frame here so it replicates all the same features as outside of Teams. You also now get an indicator if it is saved or not. It used to not tell you if it was saved. So if I was a student and I was actually making an edit here, now it says saving versus saved. I wouldn't be able to tell. So this works in Word, Excel, PowerPoint. It'll tell you if it's saved or not. Also, if you go to Slideshow, for example, you now have all the same features in PowerPoint in the web inside Teams as out. It used to be we didn't have all the same features in here, which is kind of confusing. So if I want to rehearse with coach, for example, now I can click this and I get the full rehearse with coach. I'll exit out. Things like presenting live are there as well. And all the same features are across the board in the same place. This also applies on the educator side. Let's just show this in Teams briefly. I'll go down here and click on Alex and I get the same view, all the same features as the teacher side. So Word, Excel, PowerPoint, all the indicators, all the indicators, if it's saved or not, and things like presenting live and rehearse with coach. The fifth new feature is in reading progress, our free reading fluency tool built into Teams assignments. And it is the number one most requested feature from teachers. And that is returning the reading fluency data marked up back to the student. I'm not gonna do a deep dive into reading progress. You can go into the upper right and click the link to get the full demo. But the summary is reading progress is a new reading fluency tool to help students with reading and to save teachers time. Now I'm a teacher here and I've already made a reading progress assignment and I'm gonna go into one of my assignments and return the data back to the student. So we'll click geography. Now here's the student who's turned in her work, Ashley Kozak. As the educator, I've already marked this passage up. Now I'm ready to return it back to the student. And I've marked up the mispronunciations, the repetitions, omissions, etc. And you can see the correct words per minute and the accuracy rate. The new feature shows up right here and you can see this return full report to student. And you can edit this. So the default is, and I like to call this the full enchilada, which gives them everything you see here on the screen back. It gives them the words per minute, the percentages, the colors, everything. But we know some teachers say, I just want to give them a simplified view. So if I go into edit right here, I can set what the student will see. So the full enchilada is right here, but I could also choose the simplified report. And you can see the correct words per minute and the accuracy percentage don't show in this simplified report. You can also set it for just this one student. So maybe there's a student who they're not going to really appreciate to see all the numbers and the details. You just want them to see the colors. You can say, just set it for this student. Or you can say, you know what, for my entire class, I want them all to get the simplified report. For example, maybe you're teaching younger students and all the details around the words per minute and the percentages might be too overwhelming. You can just have it be simplified. Also, what I'm gonna show here briefly is a couple of examples of what's gonna be rolling out even a couple of weeks in the future from this one, which is the customization option. And that lets the teacher tweak it just the way they want. Here's a screenshot of what that'll look like in a couple weeks. Again, it's not rolled out quite yet. You'll see this custom option. And if I choose this option, right here, the teacher can customize exactly what they want the student to see. You can uncheck boxes, leave boxes checked. It's all up to you. This is gonna be rolling out soon. 
Now back to the team that I'm in, I'm just going to set this to full report and I'm going to set this for all assignments in the future so I don't have to change it again and I'll click save. Now this is set, I'll give feedback. Now I'll click return. Let's switch over and see what the student sees on their side. I'm signed in as the student now and I got a notification that my assignment has been returned. There is the assignment returned. I'll go down and click view assignment. Here's the assignment with great job Ashley. Now as a student, I'll click this and here's the new feature. This is the new student view and you can see this is all the information, the full enchilada as I call it. So here's my correct words per minute, the accuracy rate. Now if I click on a word like physical, it shows that, oh, it was a mispronunciation. I can listen to the word, so this will play the actual read aloud voice and how it's supposed to sound. So if I said physical and I don't know quite how to say it, I'll choose listen to this word. Physical. If I choose jump to word, it'll jump the video and the audio so I can watch and listen to myself read that word. Bicycle geography. And I'll pause it and I can go to any part. I can even click on here and jump to word. So now I can go and actually see myself with the mispronunciation or the other error and I can listen to how that word should sound properly. The sixth new feature is the ability to import reading passages from OneDrive or Teams. So I'm gonna go down here in assignments and choose create and click assignment. Go over here to attach and then choose reading progress. You'll see an updated button that says import word or PDF. And when I click this, you'll see two new options from OneDrive or Teams. You can still upload from your device, but if you have passages in either of these OneDrive or Teams locations, you can now pick from there. For example, if I choose Teams, here are all the different teams I have, and maybe in my staff site, I have a bunch of shared passages. So I'll drill into documents and then general, and here's all my repository that can be shared across all the educators in my grade. So maybe I'll drill into fourth grade reading passages and I'll choose this one and I can attach that. I'm gonna cancel and show OneDrive, but you get the sense of how you can have this shared set of passages across your teams. The other option for import is OneDrive. So if I click here, it pulls up my OneDrive. I'll choose geography in this case and choose attach. And now I've got my passage all ready to go. The seventh new feature lets educators set a timer on reading passages in reading progress. So over on the right, you're gonna see a new choice, time limit, and by default, it's no limit, but if I wanna set it to five minutes or three minutes, I'm gonna choose one minute in this case, just do a one minute read, and now I can just add that to my assignment. If you wanna see what it looks like on the student side when a time limit is set, right here you can choose student view, and now you can see the student view. And right here, it says one minute to read. So that lets the student know that this is a timed passage and then they can start. I'll exit out of student view. And then I can just make my assignment. The eighth new feature lets you edit a draft of an assignment you've made in reading progress. So I'll go down in the lower part here and choose create and then assignment. We'll give it a quick title, enter the instructions, and then we'll go and click attach and choose reading progress. We'll upload a Word document quickly. And then we'll just set some information over here, genre, nonfiction, number of attempts, three, and we'll leave it at default and we'll click next. Now in the past, once I added this reading passage, I couldn't edit it. So let's say I discovered, wait a sec, I wanna change the number of attempts. I used to have to discard this and start over. Now, if I go to the three dot menu here, I can choose open in Teams and it opens up my reading passage again and I'll change my number of attempts to one, click next, and now it's changed. The ninth new feature is also in reading progress and it is improved keyboard shortcuts for the speed grader to give teachers time back. So I'll click geography here and I'll open up a student. Keyboard shortcuts can help speed up the entire review process. So I'm gonna click on the word the and it opens the menu. If I use the down arrow, you'll see the focus goes down and I can go back up. I go all the way up to the and now the square has the focus. If I hit the right arrow, it goes to the next word. So I'll hit the right arrow a couple times and you'll see it navigating like this. Hit the left arrow, I can go back the other way. I can also go to the beginning or the end. If I hit end, you'll see the focus is down at water, the last word. If I hit home, focus is back up here. Now the best one, in my opinion, is the ability to hit the space bar and be able to hear that word. So if I wanna navigate, let's say I use a couple arrows and I just wanna hear her say landforms can be mountains and valleys, I'll hit the space bar right on this word. Landforms can be mountains and valleys. And I hit the space bar again and it'll pause it. So I can go to any part right like this and hit the space bar. We'll use to decide where they- And hit the space bar to stop. 
The last keyboard shortcut is also really useful. This allows you to jump between different errors with a single keyboard shortcut. So if I start in the beginning on the, and I want to jump to this ficicle, I just do control period, Scroll down. and it jumps me. I'll hit the space bar to pause it. Now if I want to jump to the next one where she does the repetition, I can do control period again. Critical features it is important. And if I want to go backwards, I just do control comma. So control comma and control period go backwards and forwards. They're just like the Outlook shortcut in Next Previous for Messages, which is also control period and control comma. If you found this video useful, give it a like. Now, if you want to keep up with all the latest quick tip videos that I'll keep releasing, subscribe to my channel and then just ring the bell so you get notified for all the new videos that post.